Our scripture this morning is Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and 9 through 21. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with one another. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When Blaine's not here, I feel like I've already given you my sermon. Well, good morning again. We've been talking about our discipleship pathway field guide um, this uh, starting uh, in August, so last Sunday and this Sunday. And there are four vital components to that guide. Last week we talked about worship in the midst of worshiping, and that was a joy. And these papers are just going to keep falling. Your pastors feel that worship is the most vital thing um, in the life of our church. And that's why we want everyone to be in worship every week. Not so that we get to shake all of your hands or for numbers sake, but so that our hearts and our lives might truly be transformed. We asked you over the week to pray about your next faith steps in worship and to write them in the front of your own personal field guide. So today we turn in our field guide to discipleship. I think it's highly appropriate that today, the day right before most of our students go back to school, for I know some of you have already been in school a week, it, it's appropriate to be talking about discipleship. Why is the timing right? Because we all understand the concept and the need for school. We all comprehend that each grade progresses to the next grade. And from our own experience, we know that while we might be in fourth grade, there are many subjects that we have to tackle. Math, reading, science, history, spelling, the list goes on. And that some of those subjects come more naturally to us than others just like missions might come more naturally to some of us than worship. There's a natural developmental understanding and progression from preschool to kindergarten to elementary school and middle school and high school and vocational school, college, graduate school, postgraduate. And we know that it is not always nice and clean cut as it is laid out. Some students happen to 
be held back a grade or others are moved forward a grade. Some don't finish high school but come back around to it later in life. Some go straight through and are done and others decide at age 54 to change careers and go back to school. After one's children are grown, many people choose to either start or finish a degree. And even when you finally have all the degrees that you think you're ever going to need, your boss says, oh yeah, annual continuing education, and you're never done. The point is, this developmental understanding can be applied to growth and development of our spiritual lives as well. There is always, always another level of learning about our faith that we could begin to seek out and step into. That is why your pastors and church leadership felt it so important to have a discipleship pathway field guide. It helps us guide each and every one of us in those next faith steps for our whole entire lives. For unlike formal education and the workforce, there is no retirement from spiritual growth. There's no retirement from faith development, and there's certainly no retirement from our relationship with God. So our Discipleship Pathway Field Guide is a concrete way for us to now know exactly what some of those steps are that we can take to become more like Jesus Christ, that we can become more of a disciple. Spirituality and our relationship with God sometimes seems so abstract. It seems so far out there, out of our grasp, but really, it's not. There are some very concrete ways that over the centuries have proven to help open our hearts and our minds and our souls to grow in God. So what is discipleship? My definition, the Deborah Sutter definition, is a lifelong process of becoming a Jesus follower, a disciple. The goal is to be more Christ-like. Jesus' followers, his disciples, were his students. And they were following him around for three years, learning from his every action, every word, and every interaction that he had so that they could then become like this rabbi, this Messiah in our life. John Wesley set the bar high when he said that as Jesus followers, we must always be moving on to perfection, toward being more Christ-like. Well, if Jesus is no longer with us to sit at his feet and follow him for three years to learn from, how do we then learn? We learn from all that Jesus gave us in the Holy Scriptures and in all the current disciples in this room around us. Last week we said that there are some things about the Christian life and being like Christ that we can learn from those around us in worship. To take it to the next level, though, many times we need to find ourselves in a smaller conversational group to be able to study to study God's scripture and holy word. And then in that small group or Sunday school class, we can practice it over and over again. Then we relearn and we practice and we learn some more. Uh, we practice, we bounce ideas off of each other as we're moving on to perfection, as we're trying to be more and more like Christ every day and every week and every year. So let's unpack that for a moment. If you have your field guide with you, will you open to page four? You will notice that there are many ways to grow in our discipleship. The first two bullet points in particular under searching involve participating in a Sunday school or small group. The topics under the sun that those classes or groups might study are as many as the stars. And so that's why we've created core classes those you will find in your other pamphlet that's in there of about adult small group studies. We feel that these four core classes that you heard me announce earlier are foundational for anyone getting started on their faith journey or anyone who's coming back 
to their faith journey after a long time, or anyone who wishes to have a refresher course. The four foundational courses offered this semester are, number one, how to get into your Bible. Not just read it, but how can I make it personal? How can it be accessible so I can truly hear God speaking through the words on the page? Number two, how to pray and the many ways of. Because you know there's not just one way to pray, but so many times we, we've heard that there's particular ways to pray and we get caught up in that and get nervous and so we don't feel like we pray well. The book they are going to use has 40 different ways to pray so that you can be introduced to a number of things. Number three, how to serve with my gifts and talents. What are the gifts that God's given you, given you to further God's work on earth? Some people call these spiritual gifts. And number four, how to get involved at CUMC because it's connecting with others in studies and service and in worship that truly allows us to move in our spiritual growth. Other classes that are being offered cover specific books of the Bible that you can jump into and learn how they impact your life today. One class focuses solely on understanding the Holy Spirit better while another nine-month class is a journey into building a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. So you'll notice the fourth bullet point under searching is to learn about who Christ is. If the definition of discipleship is that lifelong process of becoming a Jesus follower, a disciple, then this is where we start. In each of the other three areas, we progress we begin to seek to understand more of what it means to be Christ-like and then seek to be Christ-like. And finally, under maturing, we are integrating Christ's life and teachings into our life. So two very specific ways to grow in our likeness of Christ and discipleship are listed under exploring. And they are, number one, practice what we call spiritual disciplines. And number two, find and use our God-given gifts that some call spiritual gifts. So number one, you'll notice, you don't have to turn, but you'll notice on page seven of the field guide, you will find spiritual practices of prayer and reading scripture and worship and more. Thus, our reasoning for creating those core classes that I lifted up on prayer and getting into my Bible. Spiritual practices can be individual, but they can also be communal. They can help us to love God better, to love ourselves better, and to love our neighbor better. So second, at the bottom of each of our pages on worship and discipleship, missions, and evangelism, we list a website through the United Methodist Church where you can take a test, so to speak, so that you can learn what your God-given gifts are. Unfortunately, we have found that that link has been changed since this summer when we went and found it. So that link in your book doesn't work. But the one you will find on the web page and that will be sent out this week, that one should work, I hope. You could always Google United Methodist Spiritual Gifts and it probably would come up if you're just dying to get that done at 9.30 this morning. So now I will warn you that there's some side effects that come from stepping into an intentional path of discipleship to want to grow more Christ-like. So I'll warn you, here's the side effects. The side effect number one, your relationship with God will grow. Side effect number two, you begin to feel more loved and affirmed as well as challenged as a child of God. And side effect number three, you will find yourself growing into a true disciple and into the likeness of Christ. And side effect number four, you will grow closer to those others who are in a study or group with you in this discipleship experience. 
So where you once might not have felt your relationship with God was growing by being intentional about your discipleship growth, you are feeling it. You're sensing it. You're experiencing it. You can say you have more faith and you're living it more fully. Where once you might have been comfortable or complacent as a child of God, now you feel renewed and loved and affirmed as God's child. And even from time to time, you are challenged to grow and act out your faith in a new way. And where once you asked, how is it that others seem to have such a close relationship with Jesus Christ? Where once you asked that question, you now begin to sense that exact same closeness and more of a familiarity with Christ. And you can now begin to share your love for Christ and how Christ touches your life. And where once you might not have known many people in the church, now you know those in your small group or Sunday school class. You probably know them well, and now you are known, and you feel that love too. And one last side effect, perhaps the most important, we step into spiritual disciplines of prayer and scripture reading, studies about the Holy Spirit and the book of Daniel, not to win a trivia game, not for the sake of knowledge itself, and not even for that gold star on the top of our homework, but so that our lives might be transformed into true disciples and into the likeness of Christ. Amen and amen.